I think you know what this is. This is a brain. You could see that this little ridge here is probably part of the sphenoid that separates the uh, anterior cranial fossa from the middle cranial fossa. On the other hand, this looks like it might be part of the tentorium here that separates the middle cranial fossa, in which the temporal lobes lie, from this posterior cranial fossa, which the cerebellum lies in. And I believe, I would probably call that the foramen magnum. What you see exactly in the area where the pituitary should be is a large tumor that looks like it's about three or four centimeters in diameter, has a very smooth capsule. Here's another picture of it. And uh, you know that the pituitary is only about the size of a pea, but look, this is a massive tumor. This looks like it's about as big as one of any of the temporal lobes. And if you project this down once again, it looks like it's about roughly spherical and three to four centimeters in diameter. Let's look at it microscopically. You could see that uh, like many tumors, it's basically a uniform uh, proliferation of basically one kind of cell. Um, and you know the pituitary has an anterior lobe and the posterior lobe. And the posterior lobe looks like brain and the anterior lobe looks like glands and almost all the tumors are in the anterior lobe anyway. And because there's only three kinds of cells in the anterior lobe, the acetophils, the basophils, and the chromosomes, all you gotta do is figure out which kind of cell this looks the most like, <clears throat> and you got yourself a diagnosis. This seems to be the general uh, type of pattern in the uh, gland. Notice that all these little septae here are not only fibrous tissue, but they are carrying rich blood vessels to uh, supply all of these cells. Now if you go back to your histology and take a picture of this and compare them to pictures of either acetophils, basophils, or chromosomes, you would probably agree that most of the cytoplasm in here uh, look a little bit redder than uh, the basophils. And of course, the chromophobes don't really take much of, up much of a stain at all. So this is an acetophilic adenoma. I really wish I had the normal histology right next to it, but we're not that lucky today. If you go back, these look like acetophils, except it's uniformly throughout the whole tumor. So it's acetophilic adenomas. Uh, carcinomas of uh, the pituitary gland are virtually uh, unheard of, especially in the basophilic and acetophilic uh, series. The other thing I would like to tell you as a tip is that the acetophils make hormones which nurture non-endocrine glands, like, for example, the breast, prolactin, and the body, somatotropin, whereas the basophils make hormones with, which nurture endocrine glands like the adrenal and like the uh, thyroid. So if you have a functional tumor of the uh, acetophils, they're more likely to produce things like uh, giantism or uh, galacteria. Whereas if you have a tumor of the basophils, they're more likely, and it's functional, you'll more likely have changes which stimulate either the adrenal glands or thyroid gland to hyperfunction, and thank you very much.